sharp he looks. He's always been a sharp dressed guy. Look at the suit jacket he's got, made of nylon and polyester. Ironically, so is his hair. The guy's in the Hall of Fame, for Christ's sakes. How does that happen? On this one statement alone, step, Ricky Ray rolls out to his left. Oh my God, Ricky Ray's throwing with his left hand. Dave Campbell says, Brian Hall to Brian, that's Stefan LaFour's. Brian goes, no it's not. Dave goes, yes it is. No it's not. Yes it is. We missed three plays. <laughs> and that guy's in the Hall of Fame. And in closing, we'll always think fondly of Brian singing the Eskimo fight song. He did it with such tone-deaf confidence. Like the sound of a cat in distress. Like a dog in heat like a man undergoing a vasectomy without being properly sedated <laughs> and with the grace of a rooster laying an egg. The green and gold is bold and when we're done we'll tell the world we're proud of Edmonton and the Edmonton Eskimo. First of all, I want you to know how little it means for me to be here tonight. It's uh, truly a thrill and an inconvenience. I, uh, I gave up emceeing a flash flood to be with you here tonight. And I know that uh, you can tell right now what this means, ladies and gentlemen, that the uh, downtown Rotary Club is bankrupt of ideas. <laughs> We're roasting the poster boy for women who no longer care. And, right, I mean, what's next? You know, a dunk tank with Allison Redford? I'm... He'd come downstairs in the morning and he'd say to the receptionist, okay, I'm going to practice now. And he'd have a, an arm full of newspapers, because Brian read all the time. And he'd have a journal and a Sun and a Globe and Mail and a USA Today. Probably had an Edmonton Bulletin in there, for God's sake. And his tape recorder and his cell phone. And he'd say, you can get me on my phone when you need me. And he'd lurch out to the parking lot. And I'd wait till he got, during the winter especially. And he used to back into the stall, so his car was kind of on a slope. And I'd wait till he'd get five feet from his car, and I'd phone him. And he'd... <laughs> he'd set stuff down on the front fender of his car, and it would start to slide, and he'd be... Good morning! And I'd say, Halsey, it's Whitey, do you need a hand out there? You asshole! You know, it is amazing to watch Brian Hall work a room. The man walks in like he absolutely owns it. That big smile on his face, usually looking for food and making himself at home. I witnessed it recently when Len Rhodes invited me and my husband to watch an Eskimos game from his suite. Halsey walks in, hey, how are ya? Grabbed a cookie and while Len was trying to figure out how to run a freaking 50-50 draw, Halsey made himself at home in the chair behind Len's desk. He moved Len's computer. This is a true story, ladies and gentlemen. He moved Len's computer, put his feet up on the desk, and was talking on his cell phone like a boss. A short time later, Len came in and he looked at us and says, Who's been behind my desk? Halsey, we said. And Len just shrugged his shoulders, went back to explaining to Pat LaForge how to rebuild a team in less than eight years. <laughs> I remember the great Wes Montgomery. He, he was the funniest man ever, and he and Brian competed in this marketplace for listeners. And uh, they were rivals, they were competitors, they were peers, they were friends. But Wes always liked to tell his story about the new car he bought at Crosstown, and it was synced, and he would voice activate it and say, uh, blue suede shoes and Elvis came on. And then he would say, four strong wins, and Ian Tyson would come on, and then Lady cut him off, he said, you asshole, and Brian came on. <laughs> Lynn became president and chief executive officer of the Edmonton Eskimos, December 1st, 2011. You'll recall, Rhodes made national sporting news less than two weeks later after he misunderstood Eric Tillman to have shouted down the hallway of the Eskimo offices, I'm going to have a great day. When in fact, what Tillman had actually said was, I'm going to trade Ricky Ray. Uh, yeah.
I know Len, to this day, regrets yelling back, sounds good, little red. <laughs> and speaking of the CFL, of course, we're in the presence of greatness. You all know Farley. Yeah, yeah. He did the color commentary with Brian Hall on Eskimo games for almost 25 years. I say almost because there's no accurate record of what years those were because Halsey never actually let him speak. <laughs> yeah. Legend has it that in one game against Calgary in the late 90s you can actually hear him clear his throat. <laughs> Brian Hall actually started his career at the age of 19 reading the news. What makes that so amazing is that radio had not yet been invented. <laughs> Halsey's first news broadcast was in fact on horseback and the headline was, the British are coming. <laughs> if anyone doubted, he just hung up on them. <laughs> His ability to predict the outcome of any major sporting event the day after it occurs is uncanny. <laughs> He'll be the first to tell you he knew something was gonna happen and said so before it happened. Although for some weird reason, no one can ever find any proof or tape of that. I honestly one time told him when we were first starting to work together that I thought the Eskimos should trade Jerome Messam. And he looked at me and said, that's why you'll never be a GM of a CFL club. A week later, the Eskimos traded Jerome Messam. He poked his head in the studio and said, see, I told you that was gonna happen. All kidding aside, the man is a legend, not just in his own mind, he's the gold standard of sports radio. I'm humbled and honored to have been uh, given the opportunity to roast him. Thank you, thank you, Brian, and good night.